My Hercademia, Season 7, Episode 8. This day is a culmination of all oh, it's my you. work and meticulous planning. The guy's dedicated. He's a real believer in I this. I searched far and wide for those that were born rotten. Warped seeds that were worthy of becoming his new vessel. I mean, he's got a legacy. Dobby's definitely a rotten seed. Dobby, I love his character. He's so great. It's so amazing. And everything they built with Endeavor and Todoroki. Just on a personal level, his character is somewhat annoying to me. Part of it is just his bizarre speech pattern. The other is that there's a point at which, even when you're right about having been a victim, it starts to be on you. And I know that's probably going to be very controversial. There's a very fine line, but I really believe a lot of the answers to life problems lie in finding that point of maximal responsibility that makes sense. Which I think is largely the story of My Hair Academia. Like, they push that to its optimal. Like, without personal blame, without everything's my fault, without hating on themselves and forming this rumination cycle where everything that goes wrong is because of my character flaw that is this intrinsic quality of myself since birth or what have you, whatever damaging non-productive stories that one can form about themselves. But instead, like, oh, if there's something I actually can do, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to go all the way into that without excuses. And Dobby, as sort of an opposite side to that, is I'm going to do none of that and I'm going to stay in this world of hurt that is very real, that happened, all of that notwithstanding. That is going to be the entire baseline of everything I am and everything I do to the point where it's an excuse. The whole world has changed since then. Endeavor has changed since then. A lot of characters have taken really dark things, like Todoroki, and turned them into really beautiful, positive things that are contributory. Todoroki, in contrast, having had a very similar upbringing, has confronted that pain, has acknowledged that it was something real that Endeavor did. I don't think Todoroki's growth and character expansiveness is necessarily predicated on full forgiveness of Endeavor. In fact, I don't think he really has, but it's sort of irrelevant. It's like, okay, my father did a lot of things that were bad. I don't like that. I never will like that. But my life is my own and my life is in my own hands. To be controlled by that, you end up being just a limb of the very thing you, you hate, the very thing that you're blaming. You end up giving so much more power to the very person that you despise. You have adopted these elements of devilishness that were perpetrated on you and have become an agent of that devilishness. The real defeat is either being free from it, making your own choices in opposition to the pain you've experienced, or letting that pain be a strong influence on you, but in a positive direction for noble aims. It's unsatisfying to see a grown adult in terms of age and time do all these gruesome things that are way beyond the scope of anything Endeavor did, and then turn around and say, you did this to me. It's like, yes and no. And more critically no. <laughs> it's also really cool that the fire is literally still consuming his body. I mean, he's melting, whereas Todoroki maintains great hygiene, has great skin. All of this is sympathetic. All of this is sympathetic. It could, it's all true at once. The fires of Daddy Never Loved Me. It does hurt. It's, it's gruesome to watch this child's flesh melting off his face. From the very beginning, he had everything. Cool hat. Two something. Two flash fires. I wonder what multiple interpretations this one has. Besides the obvious two fire kids fighting. Also it falls right into the metaphor of torches and Prometheus and fire passing. That consuming fire, so to speak, of ideology is not something limited to the heroes. I also, like, I don't want to speak lightly of this. I don't take it lightly or think it's not correct that he got to this point from desired to be loved by a parent that he adored. It is such a powerful thing. Like, I feel like even as an adult, I'm still unraveling pieces of this in myself. There are still moments where I catch myself like, oh man, I wonder if my parents are disappointed in me. Is this what they wanted from me? Why, with all I've done and all I've become, do I sometimes feel like they're indifferent? I can say this theoretically, but I can't even say it confidently in practice that it's something that ever can be fully done away with. All of our lives and everyone is just sort of on the spectrum of different ages of child, you know? There's no adult class. How we were born into the world informed how we continue to exist in the world. But cognition is really important, and what you do with those things is important. And again, I think responsibility for oneself. And trying to cultivate that lens where you are sort of the, the judge of yourself. You are largely the source from which what you need derives. And then I think it actually can become a beautiful and positive thing. So like, yeah, you know, I want to make my parents proud. But like a key factor in there is I want to make myself proud when I envision other people's gaze. And I sort of have faith that if people want the best for me in the right way, it will be me formulating myself in the best way I can formulate myself. And if it's not the case, then that will probably speak to the other people, the observer, as opposed to what it says about me. Where am I? I'm alive. Still speaking in his childhood voice. How long was he out? Mr. Sunny! Quick! Sleeping Beauty woke up! Come Where back. am I? Where is he? I don't... That can't be my voice. This is our home soon. Oh, is this all for one academia? The different class that we didn't want. This is way too cheery for what I think this is. I think this is a trick. It's got Jesus on the walls, but this is not a holy place. Mr. Sunny told me about you when he was showing me around. I'm kind of new here myself. What? No. Huh? <laughs> I burned up at Sakoto Peak. I felt it. So how? You fell into some water. You can't do that, Sunny. 
Why not? Because from now on, Wait, Mr. Sunshine. These other bright smiley kids. This is horrible. I don't like this the smiley el element of this place. I have to find Dad. Oh, this is a great time to break him if you want him as a soldier. Your father abandoned you because he's evil. So I need to tell mom I'm sorry. Sad that those are his thoughts. There's some good there's a kid. There's a cute, great kid. The missing parts had to be patched up with special regenerative tissue. Couldn't even We're show his face for this. Survive. But your face is entirely different. Nobody will accept you looking like this. Our best efforts prove futile. And we tried because we really love you and care about you. Now, how will I ever make Daddy recognize me? I won't stay here. There's only one person in this world I want as my teacher. Oh, that's fine. I was only trying to help you. I'm this benevolent person who loves you more than your father loves you, who has discarded you because you're not strong enough. All for one's greatest quirk is gaslighting. I'll learn from my father. Hey, calm down, son. Do we you know who my daddy is? Up. Back um, off! Good Don't instincts. Mr. Sunshine is not... He's not Sunshine. Even the man who ruled over all that is couldn't take advantage of a twisted obsession the boy had with pleasing his father. <laughs> this guy's like, dude, I'm just an NPC. I'm Gorilla Quirk. Man, am I really worthy of this exposition? Our seeds needed to be fertile. It's really difficult when Endeavor is your father. They would grow to be vessels for the demon lord should something happen to Tomoru Shigaraki. Dabi was to be one of those potential spares. He destroyed Sunshine Ranch. We cannot comprehend what that unstable fiend is capable of. Yeah, it's always been pretty clear he's not necessarily an ally of the villains. Dabi's disfigured body shouldn't have lasted more than a month after he woke. Something kept him going. You kept me alive. Ah, so you figured it out. That pleases me. And how have you managed to survive since then? The flames of hatred. The only thing keeping him among the living was his bitter rage. And I think that is a really common and powerful reaction. If you're really geared up towards something, if you have this much of a potent internal purpose that's gone a little bit wrong somewhere, like it's not necessarily in the locus of your control. For example, I need this person to love me and that's my life purpose, which unfortunately is relatable. If that gets to level 100, let's say, and then it becomes clear that it's dead, it's over, a very common reaction is not to go back to zero and be like, okay, so what is my purpose? Who am I really? What really matters? Maybe I was wrong. The response is like, go to negative 100. So you're now just in destructive mode. Like nothing matters. If they're not going to accept me, I'll just destroy everything. It's a very dark and twisted result of a very important survival mechanism. Something we need, which is what is my purpose? What am I doing? What am I oriented towards? Like everybody has a slot for that and it's never empty. And it is almost a matter of survival. I imagine it to be a very old mechanism. The action oriented people were the survivors. They're our genetic ancestors. I'm guessing it's something a lot of people go through. I think often when it goes right, it's something that happens in adolescence when your, your childhood conception of the world meets the difficulties of reality and you perhaps have a rebellious phase, a contrarian phase or something like that. But you have a certain amount of openness to realize that's also not the answer and it's not really working. There are things you actually do want to participate in healthily. There are elements of society or whatever it is you're against that would be really nice to attain that you do really want that are good for you. And so you gradually sort of drift towards the center into this very harmonious place of both non-delusion about reality, but also a healthy, probably internally self-directed vision of what you want in it, where you fit in it, and how you can proceed healthily. It's a lifetime journey, but Dobby's existence is sort of arrested development. Because it was such a dramatic incident, it's a little bit too much to unravel. The only thing that could do it is someone speaking his language, which is probably Todoroki. I actually did go back once. No, oh, none of you noticed me. I was worried that this might be an accidental failing, like they weren't there again or something. I that they moved on, look at me you again. know, maybe they'd be happy without him or something. I wanted to see what was different. What my absence had done. Well, that's really what it is. I mean, deep down, it's still a deep burning desire to be appreciated by Endeavor. The scene I walked in on told me everything I needed to know. Nothing had changed but in the three years I was gone. That might be the case. I felt no pain, even when my body festered and charred bits peeled off. It's weird. He did or he became what Endeavor wanted or what he thought Endeavor wanted, but it's not what anybody wanted. In my downtime, I watched him. Spent a lot of time on Tube You or whatever it is. What is it this time? Your Tube? Hard to make out. Yart tube? Does it really say yap tube? I like the title. Endeavor misspelled. All special moves. I really wish this was a higher resolution. I'm very curious about the metrics of this. What's the recommended video? I want to see this whole thing. Imagine the rabbit holes you would go down on social media with actual superheroes. All for one's desire to live forever meant he had no use for Dobby's fire. Thanks to the boy's steady march toward the grave. Oh, is the All Might such a melting? I'll burn all that he holds dear. Especially myself. I told you I'm not going to let you do that, big brother. Somewhere in here, Shoto's gotta have the counter yeah, in more than one way. Endeavor discovered this powerful technique as a younger man. And it's also great that Endeavor's not even here. He didn't even show up <laughs> to fight Tommy. He's fighting more important people. His heat's increasing at a faster rate, and he's not hesitating at all. 
Now I'm feeling it. It hurts me so bad to see the All Might statue melting, but it's just a statue. With my senses dulled, I no longer had the same limits. It wasn't long before I could copy a it. Very, very direct thing of self damage there. Looks almost electric. And you walked among them, even though you're a child of calamity! I see the dirty, shameless way to act as someone who wants to be a hero! Oh, wow. I have noticed on the note of how dare you try to be a hero despite being the son of calamity or whatever, people who, in their opposition to something, are not realizing they're actually being an agent of the thing, are still sort of a limb of the thing or being controlled by the thing, are very threatened and hate to see people actually be okay and succeed in light of those adversities. Which is a very jarring thing because a lot of times people who are in massive opposition to something that may very well be an actual evil are now put in a weird position where they're rooting against people doing well. They're rooting against people recovering and returning positive things to the world out of this thing that hurt them. If my whole identity and reason for being and dream for the world is to destroy something terrible, somebody going through the same thing I went through, yet thriving in the world I'm seeking to destroy is immensely threatening and disheartening. In order to overcome that healthily, you would have to totally deconstruct your entire vision of what things are and start over. Much easier is to just hate the agent of any sign that actually it's you're doing, that you actually still are a victim in a way that's self-imposed, that all this hatred that you've developed and this new plan you formulated is still you being in control of the thing you hate. I think I have a very naturally contrarian nature, and if I really had to speculate as to why, not that it's super important, it's that at some point I felt like the authority figures around me or the safeguards I had really adored and held in high regard at one point fell through, which led to the very childlike conceptualization of, oh, I can't trust anyone. Very crudely, the world is just stupid. It's full of idiots. And when that led to initially is just like every idea that came my way, anything that was status quo is my enemy. Anything that came from an authority is wrong. Eventually though, what you figure out about that is that you're not free. You are still beholden in a very critical way and a slave to the very things you hated in the first place. Like being all for a thing is not freedom, right? You're, you're at the whim of them. Being 100% opposed to a thing in all iterations and all circumstances is also slavery, just on the opposite side. It's still dictating your position, even if your position is opposite. The, the harmony comes from not really being beholden to anything and being being able to explore and look at things and ideas and people and whatever the case may be in sort of a, an objective life that matches truth as closely as possible. And being in this, you know, avatar lion turtle like place of you can see the evil, you can touch the evil, but you're not corrupted by it. You're not controlled by it. That I think is the story of Shoto, who he's not shying away from Endeavor's evil, evil at all. I think that's critical. It's not like, oh, my dad is perfect. The opposite side of that is Dobby, where Dobby also is still a victim. He's still in control by these events. And it's not an overnight thing. It's probably a lifetime process. There's no perfection in it, but there are definitely degrees of good and I mean, even with the contrarianism I mentioned, I actually really value my contrarianism. It's led me to some very interesting places, but I think the point is not to be controlled or dictated by any one thing. Like just on a pure pride level, if nothing else, how frustrating is it to form your identity in opposition to something, only to realize that in your opposition, you're still being controlled by something, that you still on some level highly value it. Dobby's firepower outburns endeavors, but it's gonna tear his body to shreds. It's uncontrolled, it's just pure rage. It's like optimal or highest level emotion. There's jealousy here too. I don't think you can say anything to Shoto he hasn't thought about for himself and dealt with. Let's look at his thing though. He's just carrying old values. We might not even need to defeat Dobby. I was a fool. Here it is. I've been here already. I've been farther than you can accuse me of being. Since we're being honest, it's kind of nice to know I was on your radar too. You're his replacement. I want to show you how I turned it into something better. Oh. A move meant to stop you. Oh, it's such a great metaphor. So beautiful. You know that of the remaining heroes, you're the only person able to put up a real fight against that. Oh, interesting that it was Shoto's input. Never wanted to show up. This is my duty. No, it's one we share. Oh. We can stop Toya and the others if we work together. Wow. Also, Endeavor making that decision is a sign of his growth towards his opinion of his children. It's a high level of respect to listen to Shoto there and let him do it. They almost feel like Pierce. Our family was a nightmare. And yet. Even so, you're the only one of us who chose to burn people. Whoa, chose. Hiroki, they're making you there. against Dobby. Everyone, make sure you're out of the bath in 30 minutes. <laughs> so, Ida, I love how we had time in this heated brotherly fight to get some Ida rule setting in and also Ida ass for reasons. This is the new technique you're trying to master. It's obviously not your usual flash fire fist. You've got to give me the details. All right. Still a real a hero wise, fan. You don't know. Poke his chest. It looks hot, but it's not. He's neutralized it like he's neutralized the rage. I manifest my right and left sides at the same time. They converge. It's got his mom's influence in there too. 
hot blood and cold blood then circulate through me. It also looks really cool. So colorful. Fire and ice working in harmony. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, said it. Man, this is the culmination of so much. This is the only way I can accept myself. Despite the real reason I was born into this world. It's turning yours. his own path. Your quirk, not his! Right, right. Midoriya. Midoriya lit that spark, so to speak. Thanks for showing me the truth. Wow. Oh my god, it's so amazing. It's so great. Give me everything you've got! Maybe that'll help you cool your head! Ugh. Yeah, he's been there and beyond. You go on and on trying to tell me what's right and what's wrong. It just goes to show we may share the same blood, but we couldn't be more different. Again, this is coming up. One thing I really don't like is sort of leaning on pain as a justification. You know, you don't understand my pain. If you don't understand my pain, you're my enemy. It's such a cheap tactic. I mean, it doesn't even allow for other people to have pain, which they surely have. I mean, in this case, Todoroki has the closest possible understanding of pain that is possible in this world, but he's too deep and he won't be able to see it unless he's like very directly destroyed by it along value metrics that he values. For both of us sakes, succumb to my fire and die! <sighs> And it's Shoto. You daughter rookies are one hell of a family. <laughs> that is true. Sorry, guys. I told you, kid. Don't waste your breath on niceties. Can you, like, get out of there? My past is steeped in greed and blood. Just remember, stay true to yourself. You are not a prisoner of your lineage. It's okay to use your power to become who you want to be. I wonder if that, of her saying that wasn't informed by the mistake with Dobby. I felt like I'd stalled on my journey. Like everyone else had gone ahead without me. It was a deep trap that he could have fallen into. Those were the values of the world that he had adopted and adopted from figures that were like paramount in this world. So many people's values are defined that way and never recover. But no, they were right there, waiting for me. They just liked him. Class A doesn't leave anyone behind. That's for damn sure. Store it up. Bobby's <clears throat> not storing anything. It's all coming out. <laughs> this looks so cool. They put so much into this episode in this animation. Stop this, brother. There's a slim hope, but there's hope. I like how he blasted him into an image of him as a kid, which is still where he is. He's never really moved past that. I also think it's critical, as I said before, that it wasn't just his mother's side. It's not just ice. It was a combination of the fiery side, which is, you know, which contains, brings to mind all the pain of endeavor. It's just he's using it deliberately to his own better purposes. Wow, that was such a great episode. That was a My Hero Academia episode. <laughs> and such a long time coming, man. That's built from what, season one? This feels like a culmination of Todoroki's journey. It feels like we just watched him reach his ultimate form. And it feels right. And I think this is actually the only way to reach someone like that. Uh, I think if someone is so wound up in this very specific, overly specific conception of the world, and even their logical processing systems have not been formed from logic, but are wrapped around arriving at the conclusion that they need to function. It's that purpose slot, that value slot, that what does my life mean slot, that would be too painful to undo because of what it replaced. Undoing a strong belief like that often means temporarily revisiting or returning to the previous one, unless you have something better to replace it with. It's a state of total vulnerability, you know, like a crayfish or a lobster crawling out of its shell for a new one. But if you can beat someone on the very things that they themselves value, it can sometimes force that acknowledgement. So for Dobby, it was just like, absolute power is the priority, attention being seen. Shoto has all that. He has the things Dobby wants. He also beat Dobby because of the differences, because of the things he was able to come to terms with and harmonize and add that Dobby couldn't, which took a very similar breaking. I mean, that's what we've, we've seen from Todoroki in his struggles with Endeavor. It's your quirk, not his, is such a great and enduring line. It's like, yeah, you do get things from your upbringing. There are things about you that are just part of you, and there are many things you may detest, and you may detest the person, and you may detest how it manifests in you, but it's your choice how you use it. It's largely your choice if you end up just being the next iteration of a terrible cycle, or if you do the very difficult work of countering it, which probably means accepting the thing and then mastering it, rather than living in total opposition to it. I also love the fact that Shoto loves Dabi, or seems to really care about him. I mean, beyond just the brother thing, this is not totally clear, but the way I'm imagining it, it's possible that Shoto does not have these revelations, does not become this, does not outstrip Dabi emotionally, mentally, if not for the experience his family went through with Dabi. Did his mom say those same things to him that put that idea in his head? Dabi may have been something that led to his greatness, and so it, there's sort of an obligation there to rescue your family and give it back. You know, maybe someone in your family has given you a great burden. Well, the ultimate arc, not that this is necessary, I mean, I think there are more important things, this is sort of like the last step, is if you've really mastered it, you can 
go back and you can be the one, speaking of maximal responsibility, to repair the damage of your bloodline. It's also very simply and sweetly. Someone finally caring about Dobby and seeing him as this kid that's worthy of attention or part of the family, not something that was insignificant because he wasn't powerful enough or whatever. Shoto really, really doing his part, neutralizing one of the greatest threats pretty much single-handedly, while being almost the perfect banner for this My Hero Academia heroism. Thank you.